Good day, sir. My name is Morris Miguel C. Bismonte. I am a third-year nursing student from San Beda University. And today, I will demonstrate the 12 ECG lead placement. So the first thing that we need to do is to perform hand hygiene and don PPE as necessary. So in this procedure, I will be using an alcohol-based hand drug. And I'm also going to put on a cap. We need to make sure to cover all the hair. And then as well as the mask. And then after that, I'm going to identify the patient by checking his uh, ID band. And then we're going to ask him to state his name and birth date. So, sir, may I check your ID band? And then after checking the ID band, we need to make sure to ask him to restate his name and uh, say his birthday for confirmation. And then after that, we're going to establish privacy by closing the door to the patient's room and drawing the curtains surrounding the patient's bed. And then after that, I'm going to introduce myself to our patient. So, good day, Sir Albaco. My name is Nurse Marius. And then after that, we're going to explain the procedure, its purpose, and the patient's expected participation during the procedure. Uh, so, good day, Sir Albaco. Today, we will be checking your heart's rhythm and electric activity through the ECG. But first, we have to place these sensors attached to your skin in order to detect the electrical signals produced by your heart each time it beats. Now sir, upon the procedure you are expected to lie down and just relax. Is that okay? And then after getting our patient's consent, we're going to assist the patient into the supine position or lying down and then we're going to raise the level of the bed to a comfortable working height within our waist level. And then now we're going to position the EKG machine, the cables, and electrodes within the easy reach. And then now we're going to confirm that the EKG machine is electrically grounded, and then we need to verify that the uh, third prong of the power outlet or plug, or also known as the ground prong, is intact and plugged into the connected, and plugged or connected into a power source. And then afterwards, we're going to input the patient's identification uh, information into the EKG machine. So we're going to input it, uh, patient El Guapo. And then after that, we're going to assist the patient in removing the clothing or adjusting the patient gown to expose the chest, the arms, and then the lower legs. However, we will keep the pelvis and the thighs covered. So sir, I'm going to uh, help you in exposing your area that we will be uh, doing for the ECG, which is your chest and then your arms. Is that okay, sir? And then if it is okay, we're going to assist him. Only exposing the chest, the arms, and then still covering the thighs and the pelvis. And then after that, we're going to prepare the patient's skin by wiping with an alcohol swab and then clipping excess hair. Only if necessary, we must remember not to shave the patient's hair. So we will get an alcohol swab. And then we're going to clean the patient's chest. And then afterwards, discard. And then also we can uh, clip some hair, but remember not to shave it. So let's say for example, we're already done. The first thing that we will do is to apply the limb electrodes for both the standard and the augmented uh, limb leads or to the extremities of the patient. And we need to remember to avoid bony prominences and placing it in the right and left electrodes uh, uh, symmetrically. So we're going to place it. So let's say for example, this is the patient's uh, arm. We're going to clip it right there. This one also. Uh, we must remember that it should always be symmetrical. And then for the patient's leg, which is right here, for example, 
and then the other leg as well. And then after that, uh, we're going to place or apply the precordial or the chest electrodes in a flattened semicircular shape across the chest wall. So we have uh, six. So for our V1, we're going to put it on the fourth intercostal space on the right of the sternum. So this is for our V1. So again, for our V1, the fourth intercostal space on the right of the sternum. And then next, for our V2, the fourth intercostal space in the left of the sternum. So it should be parallel with the V1. So again, we're going to place it. For our V2. And then afterwards, we're going to uh, skip the V3 and then we will proceed to the V4. So the, v the V4 can be found in the fifth intercostal space in the left mid-clavicular line. So one of the indicators, uh, it can be found also in the point of maximal impulse. So we're going to put the electrode in our V4. So for our V4, we're going to put it right here. And then next, we're going to uh, put our V3 in the midway of the V2 and then the V4. In between of the V2 and then the V4. So that is for our V3. So put it in the midway. There we go. And then for our uh, V5, we're going, to put, we're going to put it on the fifth intercostal space, anterior axillary line. So that is for our V5. Anterior axillary line on the fifth intercostal space. And then lastly for our V6, fifth intercostal space and then mid axillary line. Uh, it is placed more on the side of the patient. So as you can see here, I'm going to lift it up. So that is our uh, ECG placement. Okay. And then afterwards, uh, we're going to connect the cables to the EKG machine. And we're going to attach the cables to the appropriate electrodes, which we have prepared already. And then now we're going to instruct the patient to relax uh, his shoulders and legs while recording a course. And also, we need to remind him to remain still during the recording because muscle movement or tension causes an artifact. And then now we're going to activate the machine to begin the EKG. So we're going to turn on and activate the machine. And then now we're going to review the printout of the EKG. So this will be our printout. So we're going to review the printout of our EKG to verify that the tracings are clear and we are going to uh, confirm the absence of artifact. If artifact is observed, we're going to repeat the recording after checking. So we need to uh, be mindful of the following. Number one, for patient movement, that the patient is relaxed, that skin preparation is adequate and the electrodes are positioned securely, that the cables are connected properly and are not pulling on the electrodes or overlapping to each other and then for interference by the ancillary power cable and then afterwards we're going to monitor the patient for comfort uh, are you okay sir if our patient is okay we will continue now upon completion of the ekg we're going to remove the cables from the electrodes and the electrodes from the patient's skin uh, so let's say that I have already removed the cables since it is hard to remove because this one is paper and it can tear the paper upon removing. So afterwards, uh, we're going to clean the patient's skin for any residual gel from the electrodes and we're going to assist the patient. So let's say that it is already removed. So we're going to clean the patient's skin 
and then we're going to assist the patient in redressing in his uh, gown or clothing. So we're going to reposition. So we're going to assist the patient uh, redressing. So sir, I'm going to cover you with a blanket again. And then after assisting our patient in redressing, we're going to assist him in repositioning for comfort and safety. And then we need to clean, disinfect, and store the cables as well as the EKG machine according to our facility protocol. And then we also need to dispose the electrodes and other used materials according to the facility protocol. And then we're going to remove our PPE. And then we're going to discard it appropriately and then we're going to perform hand hygiene. So again, alcohol-based hand rub, perform hand hygiene, and then provide aftercare to our patient. And then reestablish privacy. So thank you for watching and God bless.